Hey everybody, welcome. Today is Tuesday, March 31st. Today's the last day of the month. My name is Pete Renzulli. Welcome to today's episode of Stocks for Breakfast. And I have no idea why I keep doing this with my hands. It just seems like something you should do on the camera. Today we're going to talk about John Deere. We're going to talk about Netflix. We're going to talk about Caterpillar. We're going to talk about Apple. Uh, we're going to talk about your tracking journal, which is super important, especially in a kind of in a tape that we're in right now. But it's really important all the time because it really means that you are acting like a professional. That means that you're prepared no matter what. That, that's really the definition between an amateur and a professional. Amateur is kind of doing it on the side, which, again, there's nothing wrong with that. But even if you're doing it on the side, it's your side gig, it's your side hustle, right? And you were trying to make extra money or you, you eventually maybe you want to do it full time. A professional is somebody who's always prepared and takes it seriously. That's the big difference, and hopefully I can impart that to you. In case you don't know, I actually had a trading firm for years in New York City. We had 300 traders, and the single biggest thing, my, my main goal to help other people start to achieve their dreams of becoming a full-time trader was we need to be prepared because it's, the market doesn't give you opportunity. You go and get it. Sure, there's some days where the market's more volatile than others, obviously like the last uh, six or seven weeks or everybody and their grandmother wants to be involved in the market. Now I'm hearing from people I haven't spoken to in 20 years asking me about what to trade. However, I want to start out with talking about a book today. Um, this book is one that I bought a long time ago. It's actually about a commodity trader uh, way back in the day and, and really good marketing. Uh, the, the author of the book is Trader X. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't know if you can see that, uh, but the name of the book is called Dancing with Lions. And it's kind of very um, apropos, big word today, right? Uh, it's very apropos for, the, for, for trading in general, uh, but especially in this market where it's moving really fast and you got to make a lot of good decisions. And you, if you can see on the cover of the picture, there, there's a picture of a cat with a lion in the mirror. And I, I actually read a really good quote yesterday that just happened to play into something that I wanted to talk, talk about today. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because if you're watching this video right now and you have a hunger to, 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 to be successful, to, to make this happen for yourself, there's going to be adversity. There's going to be ups and downs and you're absolutely going to be challenged by the market. And you're going to get to a point where you feel like you know everything, but you're not making any money. Everybody gets to that point. And it's in that moment, in that moment of decision, when you're frustrated and you feel like you're never going to get there, that's where the turning point comes from. So the quote that I saw yesterday that, that hit me like that. I thought it was awesome. So if you don't like what you see in the mirror, don't blame the mirror. And if you think about it, that means that you're responsible for what you see in the mirror. So what you see in the market, and I remember Linda, Linda Bradford Rasky a few years ago, uh, who was quote unquote, one of my trading mentors. I only met her maybe once, but she's brilliant. Um, she said the market is the most expensive form of psychotherapy you'll ever have in your life. And it's basically because it reflects back to you what you see. Now, whether you see it's impossible, whether you see it's, it's immense opportunity, that's on you. And really that comes down to how prepared are you? So my job, and again, it's not really my job, but I really appreciate you watching the videos. My job, I feel like it's my responsibility. And actually it's kind of something that I get asked often. If you're such a good trader, if you're doing this for all these years, why are you doing this? Well, I'm doing this because I understand how hard trading is. I understand banging my head against the wall. I understand having notes and notes and notes of notes and saying, I don't, what am I missing? If I can help you with that, that inspires me because I understand how hard it is. And, and maybe you can give it back. Maybe you could share that with somebody else. Maybe you could leave a comment. Maybe you could subscribe. It all goes around. There's enough money for all of us to, to, to make it together. And if we work as a community, that's where the real special stuff is going to happen. So if you don't like what you see in the mirror, if you don't like what you see in your P&L, that's on you. And hopefully through these videos, I can share all the stuff that didn't work for me and uh, help you minimize those mistakes. Because remember, if you're, if you're a regular viewer, minimizing those mistakes, making a, a list of what absolutely does not work. And I'm going to talk about that in Deere right now. John Deere, I'm going to use that as an example. Take ex absolutely what doesn't work. Stay away from those mediocre trades. And again, you have your A-plus trades up here and everything else down here. You want to stay away from these. Those are the ones down here, are the ones, the reasons you don't get paid. The closer you get to only executing those trades that have the highest probability of making money, you instantly start to become a better trader. And that's where you start to turn the corner. If you want to know why you're not getting paid and you feel like you really know what you're doing, it's because you're taking too many of those crappy trades that are slowly eating away at your P&L and you don't even realize it. Now, 
I'll give you a really good example of where this manifests and you don't have any idea it's even happening. Let's say the market's really strong or the market's really, let's use you strong as an example. And you feel like it's overbought for argument's sake. And, and you put on a short and you're like, no, I got the top. Instead of looking to get long, because that's the obvious order flow and where everything's going, you actually like, oh, I'm going to short sell this thing. I'm going to get the top and it slowly drifts higher and closes on the highs. Then the next day it does the same thing. And the next day it does the same thing. You're like, oh, one of these days I'm going to get it. And you feel awesome because, oh, went up four days in a row and I hardly lost any money. You know what? You should have been making money. Don't pat yourself on the back for fighting the obvious good trade and managing risk when you should have been long. Those little things like, you're like, oh my gosh, it was just awesome. The market was going up. I'm so disciplined and I didn't lose any money. That's not your goal. Your goal is to pay attention to what's going on in the market mirror. I don't know why I, can't, I like philosophy today. Um, pay attention to what's going on. Make a list of what doesn't work. Stay away from what doesn't work, and now we're going to get into the chart. So hopefully, hopefully those are uh, uh, stuff that you write down. Don't hesitate to pause the video and write it down. And, and look, I'm telling you right now, I made every mistake you could possibly imagine. I had every chart set up you could possibly imagine. You know what it comes down to? What are the odds of follow through? And can I mentally say, okay, if I make a good trade that doesn't make money, am I okay with that? There's a big difference between a bad trade and a, and a good trade that doesn't make money. Your goal is to always allocate money allocate and accept risk in exchange for great profit potential. It's those bonehead trades that we make that are keeping us frustrated and doubting ourselves. If you're watching this and you're a hard worker, I, I, I can virtually guarantee you're on the right path. Just don't give up, but you need to minimize mistakes. That's the number one thing that will instantly help you start to turn the corner. So I, I know that was a lot to start out the video, but I, 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 I Trading is hard, and, and, and if I can help you get to the point where you, where you start to keep those mistakes out of the picture, uh, that's important to me. Um, and hopefully, if you find the videos important, you'll subscribe, um, and if they help you, you'll leave a comment if you have any questions. So let's go right into the, um, let's go right into the market. And actually, first, we're going to start out with what's going on in the tape in general. Uh, if you remember yesterday, we had the inside candlestick, and we said we were looking for a trade to hold to the close. And if you take a look at the intraday chart of the SPY, this was actually the opening price. So other than the first half hour today, we were above the open the entire day. So think about that. Just watching one video from yesterday, listening to the game plan saying, if this happens, we're looking to hold to the close. And we actually got it the whole day. You didn't have to worry about all these wiggles and jiggles and, and dancing back and forth. It was an easy setup. I'm not going to say it was an easy trade. There's a difference between finding setups and making money. And that's another big part of actually um, – what I really want to help you guys do is really understand that you don't want to just be a chart reader. You want to be a tape reader. You, tape reading means you put the pieces together and you're like, if this happens and if this happens and you stack the argument, stack the argument, stack the argument, I got a good idea. And if it follows through, awesome. If it doesn't, you need to say to yourself, was that a good trade that didn't follow through? If the answer is yes, you take that same trade again, even if it doesn't make money because we're looking for trades over time. So yesterday we had a really good setup going into the day. Now, it was kind of a slow grinding day, but that's not the point. The point is we went into the day saying, if this happens, we're looking to hold to the close, and we got this nice slow grinding move to the upside. So again, uh, that's the importance of going into the day and having the guts to say, here's what I expect to have happen today. And I know I covered this before. If you have five, seven, 10 stocks, you say, here's exactly what I expect to have happen. And if eight of them do nothing that you expected to have happen, but two do exactly, Print money on those two. Who cares what the other eight did? Everybody folk, oh, the other eight didn't do anything. So what? If two stocks do exactly what you said, make money. Who cares about the other eight, right? All right, so I wanted to use, uh, we're going to get right into Apple because that's a big one that everybody likes to watch. If you remember yesterday, we had an inside candlestick in the market and we were looking for something to, uh, to break out and hold to the close and look for some follow through. And actually, we're getting both of those things right now. We got a strong close yesterday. Kind of a grinding trade yesterday. We got um, <clears throat> close on the highs and we're getting follow through so far early in the morning. It's super early. It's only quarter after six right now. But in Apple today, you'll notice we actually have an inside candlestick followed by an inside candlestick. So we have two days of consolidation. And if you know, two days of consolidation generally will explode into a trend day. What we're looking for today is, again, a inside candlestick breakout. In today's case, inside, inside. I love that quote. That's from uh, my old trading partner, Marion. We, we used to manage uh, our chat room together. She used to call it inside, inside day. And there's inside, inside signals too on intraday charts, right? 
Um, so we're looking for a large red or a large green candlestick. It's a one day strategy. You could possibly get follow through. Uh, typically you do. However, from a short term strategy, if you do get a really solid trend day, some people take most of the position off and then scale the rest. We'll see what happens. But a uh, really good trade in um, uh, Apple setting up today. Uh, I want to also talk about Cigna. Cigna actually inside candlestick. And that's exactly what we're looking for to happen in Apple today, which we were looking for in the market. Didn't have quite a huge monster green candlestick, but that's what we're looking for. Inside candlestick breakout, inside candlestick breakout, right? Uh, so that's another one to keep on the radar. And actually, the reason I like this one is it still has room to go. It looks like right around 200 uh, is the next level. So you still have another $22, depending on where that opens today. Um, I want to also discuss uh, Netflix. Some people are writing in about Netflix, and I understand why. But again, let's not look at the long term. Uh, let's not forget what's going on in Netflix. This stock is having a monster problem for probably about 10 months to get above this 380, 390 level. Let's just call it 385 just for argument's sake. And you can see again, I love to write the levels that it's actually having a hard time getting through, not the exact high. Rookie traders say all the way up here is resistance. No, it's not, that's garbage. This is the real number it's having a hard time getting through. The stock is actually showing relative strength and it's been in the tracking journal, which I'm gonna talk about in a second, but it doesn't have awesome room to go. If you decide to get long the stock and you're getting followed through, it's actually opening lower as of right now, you only have a certain amount of potential. So if you have to risk $4 to make $4, that's a crappy trade. Break-even traders make break-even traders. If you take a trade that's one-to-one, 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 one -to -one, it's going to be very hard unless you're doing hundreds of trades a week to actually make money. You're kind of grinding it out. There's nothing wrong with that. I did that 20 years ago. It's just exhausting, uh, and you really have to trade a lot. So I don't like Netflix at all. Uh, if I do, it's because it opens lower, shows relative strength, stays above the opening price, and then I know that we have this level here. So it's not a longer-term swing trade. That's the potential on the trade. So that's really what I want to get across. Maximize your potential in exchange for taking that risk, and Netflix does not have awesome potential past that level. Uh, Caterpillar is another one that I want to take a look at today. What I really like about this, and, and I'm going to use this and John Deere, both of them, in uh, the same kind of example. Um, is if you'll notice over here in John Deere, we had a lot of op uh, open and close, open and close. We closed below the open quite a bit before the breakdown. And now we're actually kind of seeing the opposite here where we are actually opening and closing up here. We're getting quite a few uh, stronger notes. Remember we said reading the notes versus the song itself. The song is the bigger picture, the order flow and the momentum and the notes are individual. Are we closing above the open, closing above the open, closing above the open? which stocks are doing that with consistency. And we're starting to see that in deer. Um, so again, I'm not saying necessarily it's a great long. What I'm teaching you is I'm training you to take a look at and say, how do I read the tape in this stock? Okay, is it a long or a short? How much money was allocated to this by the smart money over time? And in this particular case, you can see that we're only talking about four or five days worth of buying, but it is a strong four or five days where we're consistently closing above the opening price which again, you start to put those pieces together, the opening price for the month, the opening price for the week, the opening price for the day, consistent closes above the opening price, and you start to put a picture together where you learn how to build, uh, you learn how to build an argument. A couple conversations about Amazon today. Amazon, actually, if you didn't read the news, they're actually boycotting it. I believe it's in New York City for how they believe that the wealthy, one of the wealthiest men in the world is handling uh, both the conditions to work there as well as what he's doing for it. I'm not getting into that. I don't get into politics at all, especially in this kind of thing. We're here to learn how to make money together. Uh, and, and, and again, that's not so much only politics. It also is how the people who work there feel they're being treated. You can't um, blame them if that's actually the case. But let's get back to the trade. Amazon above this level has room up to 2100. If it does punch through that level, NVIDIA actually also has some nice room to go. You can see that we actually broke the short-term downtrend and we're actually above this for a couple of days in a row now. What I don't like is the fact that we have three indecision candles, uh, although yesterday was strong. So really yesterday was a big level because we now broke out of the level. Remember, the level we can't get through um, was this one. It got up there, pushed back, got up there, pushed back, got up there, pushed back three days in a row. And now yesterday we finally closed above there. So NVIDIA above yesterday's high and above today's open sets up a trade. So where? That would be over here. So we're going to be looking for the, uh, 285 basically from where we are right now, which is almost $19 away. So you got some decent profit potential there uh, in NVIDIA as well. I just want to briefly talk about um, one way to also find some opportunities. And this is nothing more than uh, a, a list that I made of the major ETFs. 
And then you go down into those major ETFs and see which stocks are the largest holdings. And this is a good way to find opportunity first in the bigger picture. If you do top-down analysis, go from the market to ETFs down to those individual stocks, uh, it's a good way to find some opportunities. And you start with the big picture first, and then you work your way down. I want to get into that. We'll do that in a, in a future stock trading for beginners video. Uh, also, I want to take a look quickly at the map of the S&P 500. You can see some stocks were really strong yesterday that really popped out. We'll take a look at Microsoft. And um, yep, same thing, inside candlestick breakout. You're starting to see a pattern here. It's a very simple pattern to find. Inside candles usually lead to solid, good trend days. And again, if you go down to, based on what we said, looking at the market yesterday, here is the opening price in Microsoft yesterday. And look what price action did the rest of the entire day, right? So clues, stock market leaves clues if you're paying attention. A couple of things to notice here, while the market's been strong, a couple of financial Stocks, specifically credit services, are getting hit. And again, if you think about that, why? Why would credit card companies be weak on days that the market's closing on, on the highs? A lot of people losing jobs right now uh, or, or out of work completely. Uh, my nephew's uh, restaurant in New York City, uh, not his restaurant, where he works, very big, very famous restaurant in the city, and they all got laid off. They, they're now collecting unemployment because they have no idea when they're going to open again. So think about that. If you want to start to think about stuff you would put in your tracking journal, which is how you'd look forward to other stocks to pay attention to if and when the market rolls over, you want to be prepared. Remember we talked about before about being prepared and acting like a professional, even if it's your side gig while you keep your full-time job, you should be doing the work to create a tracking journal of if the market's strong, these are the stocks I'm going to trade, like we're looking at today. If the market, <clears throat> excuse me, is weak, which stocks already had selling when the market is weak, those are the stocks I'm going to turn to first. You don't want to short strong stocks. Again, staying away from those mistakes. Look at weak stocks that were weak when the market was strong. Those are the ones that have existing selling and the pressure is holding them down. Those are the ones that if you understand and are okay with short selling or maybe even buying puts, that are, those are the list of stocks that you would go to first. Okay, That was also a big mistake I made early in my career looking Stocks that were going up and I thought they were going to roll over and I should have been looking for stocks to short first. So again, learn from my mistakes. I paid for, the, I paid for those losses already. Make it easy on yourself, right? So these credit card companies, Capital One, Discover, those are the ones that you take a look at, do a little deeper research and see if they meet your criteria and then take a look at those stocks if the market rolls over. But today it looks like we're going to get some follow through. The futures are actually up a little bit higher right now. So thank you so much for watching today. If you find these videos helpful, please subscribe. That would mean the world to me. And just as importantly, if I cover something or if there's something you could think of that you'd like for me to cover in a future video, absolutely leave a comment. I'd appreciate it. So I'm Peter Renzulli signing off. Stocks for Breakfast. Have an awesome day and please be safe. That's the number one most important thing. All of this stuff is, it's, it's important, but the number one thing is obviously our health and safety right now. So we've got a lot going on in the world right now. Be smart, be safe. Have a great day trading. See you everybody.